How are you, Rudy? It's good to see you. You too, Joe. And I'll tell you, each day gets better. I was very, very happy to meet your daughter today. Oh, yeah. Graduating from the University of Michigan. I wow. know. I'm so proud of her. She, yeah, she's I'm worked so, so proud hard. Of Jessica, too. I she know. I was just going to say. Yeah, she graduated today, too, from, you know, from the Boston Conservatory slash Berkeley School of Music. But yeah. here's the deal. Those two, will ha we will have them together. They're yep. precious young ladies. You yes. will love them both. They're unbelievable. I know you love Jillian. You'll love yes. Jessica. I love Jessica. But you'll love them coming together. It'll really be cool. Yeah. Really well, cool. we'll we will have them on within the next week or two. Um, yes. And they can talk about their unique experience. And oh my gosh. And uh, you know, I, I think we're we're raising a couple of very resilient uh, daughters. As anybody who has um, you know a son or a daughter of that age, uh, what they've mm -hmm. gone through in their short lives are. It's pretty amazing. Um, but you know what? I, I wanted to ask you, because you live in Las Vegas, and I was watching CNN uh, a couple of days ago, I, one of the news channels, and they were showing the Las Vegas Strip. And uh, yeah, it's a ghost town. It's un it was, Rudy, mm -hmm. I've been to Las Vegas a thousand times, mm -hmm. and it was remarkable. It, it almost looked like a movie set, you know? I mean, there was nobody yeah. there. It's strange, isn't it? And the fountains in front of the Bellagio weren't on, nothing. Mm. It must seem so strange. You know, and I've heard that, you, that there's 900,000 people in Las Vegas who are unemployed right now. <clears throat> well, I have to tell you this, you know, and to be quite honest, um, it's going to take a little time for that to come back. Yeah. That's yeah. all I have to say. That's for sure. But you know yeah. what? There's no doubt that there are a number of people who are listening to us right now who are understandably, um, you know, pretty anxious, pretty stressed out. And so that's why I thought that it would be a good idea for us to have somebody come on, an expert, who mm -hmm. will be able to sort of uh, guide people to making the right choices right now, take advantage of where they are, and, and hopefully help to kind of um, calm some of, the, um, you know, some of the nerves, some of the stresses, some of the concerns. And his name is uh, Dr. Marty Nimco. And Marty is a career coach who's helped literally thousands of clients achieve success. He's written 10 books thousands of articles, has a radio show in San Francisco, oh, wow. and even teaches college classes. Marty is the guy to talk to about careers. And he's even been called career coach extraordinaire by US News and World Report. Wow. So let's bring him on. Rudy, meet Marty Nimco. In fact, uh, Rudy and I were talking just before uh, you joined us, Marty, that you know, Rudy's in Las Vegas, which is a ghost town right now, 900,000 people unemployed. And, and many of those people, I would imagine, are just, they're terrified, completely stressed out about it. Um, you know, if, if you were in their position, what would be the first thing that you'd do? First thing I do would not be fun, but I would definitely do it. I would cut my expenses to the bone right away because I don't want to be homeless. I don't want to be cutting my medication in half. I don't want to be cutting my toilet paper in half. <laughs> so, you know, I would really, you know, it's, it would really go down even as far as really, you know, they, they make toilet paper in large sheets. I would be taking one sheet at a time to make sure I was, you know, I would really be careful so that I didn't feel the pressure and mm -hmm. the stress because you no know, anybody who tells you it's going to be easy to find a job now is full of it. So I would cut my expenses so I can at least avoid being homeless and having to cut my medication in half, step one. Mm -hmm. Step two, I would simply make a list of everybody who liked me, present and past, and I would call them up and I'd say, these are the kind of things I do, these are the kind of things I do that are, that are bad, I'm bad at this. You know anybody I should talk to about getting hired? And I would make all those calls in one two hour period. Bang, 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 bang. Next. I would walk into workplace in my neighborhood because, you know, when the, when the, the pandemic uh, shutdown lifts, there's going to be traffic again. I don't want to have to sit in gridlock. I'm going to walk into places near me, office buildings, bit whatever. I'm going to do that. Then if I needed to, I'd wear a sandwich board. I would say, great writer, great speaker, whatever, looking for a job, easy to work with, hi. 
And I'll bet you I would be working within a week. Wow. You know what? He's right. I think what you're saying, it's like I was thinking about this the other day when I drove by the new stadium Las Vegas built. Now, man, I would love to get a job in there just to be part of that. Right? Right. So maybe I can go in there like I did at Notre Dame, clean the stadium after the right, game. Right, dude. <laughs> just get in. Right. Uh, Joe and I actually were talking about this earlier about getting fired. I don't want to get yeah. fired anymore. So we've all been fired. Me too. Yep. Don't let you think a holy now. I've been right. fired too. Three times. And you know. not because I wasn't a good guy, because I didn't connect with his vision or connect with his culture or connect with his style of leadership. Rudy, even if you did screw up, we all screw up. I screw up, you screw up. You know what? We can rebound. Nobody is a better better example of a rebounder than you. We can f screw up. And nonetheless, the losers sit and wallow and they blame it on the boss right. and they blame it or whatever. <laughs> Winners say, damn it, I'm a paraplegic, but I'm going to, damn it, I am yeah. going to find somebody who recognizes my value. I, boy, I'll tell you, you're singing to the choir, man. I, <laughs> well, you're the inspiration, a, dude. It's you, not me. Well, you know what? I took that because they say, oh, Rudy, you got a chip on your shoulder. No, I don't. I just don't want to be around you, man. <laughs> you know? So, I, you know, I felt very powerful and not ever felt bad about doing what I was doing in order to get to where I had to go. Right. So, hey, you, hey, Marty, I, I wanted to ask you, you, you talk about, um, you, you know, of course, your value, and, and that's typically tied to a paycheck and so forth. But you said it's also important to determine your individual values, um, and that's as important a part of the equation. What, what did you mean by that? Everybody's values are really the same. We'd like to talk about the, these career counselor types that we need to identify everybody's values pretty much when they, at least they espouse values and say, you know what, I really want to make a difference. I want to be kind. I want to be generous. I want to be ethical. I want to... Everybody's got the same values. Mm -hmm. But what counts is not what you say, but what you do. And so what it means, whether you are an accounts payable clerk or you're an entrepreneur or you're a host of a TV show or you're anything else, your values are, you say, damn it, Money is, sure, I don't want to be homeless. I want to make a decent living. But every study has shown that beyond a bare middle class living, your happiness is likely actually to decrease because your life gets really complicated. Wow. Your values are no matter what you're doing, whether you're a ditch digger or you're a CEO, it's I'm going to be the best damn ditch digger I can be and ethical. I'm not going to say I worked overtime if I didn't. And in the end, you could put your head on the pillow at night and you can tell your son or your daughter that you are a mensch, a person of substance. And mm. that's where values come in. You know, Rudy, I feel like doing something. We were not planning to do this, but I feel like doing it because what the hell. Um, talk about rebounding from setbacks. Mm. I have played the piano my whole life. And then in recent years, as I got older, I developed a hand condition. I can't straighten this finger. Mm -hmm. I can't straighten this finger. And I can't straighten this finger. And so, and the doctor said, you need this surgery. And if you have the surgery, it may work and it may come back worse. And I said, screw it. I hate doctors. I'm scared of doctors. I'm not doing no <laughs> surgery. And I decided I am going to, and I could either hang up the piano playing or I could say, damn it, I'm going to learn how to play with seven fingers. Oh, wow. wow. May I take a minute to demonstrate yeah, the seven finger course. piano player? Absolutely. Love I love that. A great example. I'm going to give you two, two, I'll give you a choice. You know, I can play something I wrote, which is kind of inspiring. Yeah. Uh, let me do that. I wrote yeah, let's do okay. that. I love that. All right. I love I'm going to move, I'm going to move this webcam That's so you fine. can see that I'm playing rather than just playing, pushing play on somebody else's music. I was going to say, do you have that button on that piano, man? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like a player piano, right? This is yeah. the, uh, this is the seven fingered version of something I wrote. I love it. You want to hear it on regular piano or electric piano? Whatever, whatever you feel. Whatever you choose, Marty. Right, yeah, go, Marty. No fancy effects here.
Bingo. Wow. wow. That was beautiful, Marty. Thank you. That was beautiful. And no, uh, what yeah, a yeah, what a was... perfect demonstration of yeah. of of just the power of perseverance and not taking Well, he was determined. Man. Yeah. Amazing. You know, the music comes from the inside out and he has it. Yeah. See, it's like me playing it. No, it didn't matter whether I went to the next level. It didn't matter. That's right. I proved to myself I don't quit, and that's what you did. That's, that's a right. great example. Mm -hmm. I love it. Wonderful. I love it. I'm inspired. Yeah. Hey, Marty, we, we sort of touched on, on college a little bit. I mean, um, you know, you, you very, um, uh, you know, candidly express that, you know, it's, it's not what it's cracked up to be for a lot of people, but with people in homes right now, you know, trying to decide what to do to improve their situation, would be doing something like an online degree or online schooling. Would you recommend that as, as a way of, of, you know, raising your value uh, in the job market when it does open up? I think the degree is like, it's too much. There's so many, you know, you need 120 units. Yes, there's advantages, of course, of having the degree. Mm -hmm. But the smarter thing is to pick and choose. Like at a buffet, you don't eat the entire buffet. You mm -hmm. pick and choose the stuff you like that's really good for you that you need. And there are certain courses that have, you know, we are blessed to have uh, places like Coursera and edX and Udemy and Udacity and LinkedIn Learning with thousands of courses that have user reviews. Mm -hmm. So instead of being stuck with Professor Hassan Pfeffer, the horrible, boring <laughs> professor, having to sit there for 30, 13 weeks and whatever, you can find a course that's on what you want, taught by a transformational instructor that people learn a lot from. And you don't ne to ne necessarily need 40 courses. Take them one at a time. I, I recommend very often foregoing state U, let alone private U, in favor of what I call U, U, Y O U, oh, U, yeah. where you do a combination of those online courses, self study, a tutor, YouTube videos. That combination can often teach you more of value. And then you just need, in applying for jobs, need to say, hey, of course I could have gotten a degree. Mm -hmm. But I decided to focus on substance rather than form. And I learned so much more from this agglomeration of learning experiences rather than just taking a bunch of courses at one university. I got the best of the world. And, and then perhaps include a portfolio. You will be a more viable candidate for most jobs than somebody who went and got the degree from no name state university. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, let's talk about the prediction of what skill and jobs will be the biggest demand then for the kids coming out of school. What do you think it is? Okay. Well, I am a political moderate, but I really, my tea leaves, and again, he who lives by the crystal ball eats broken glass. But that well, said, well put. somebody, you know, remember in that 1968 movie, uh, the, the Graduate, uh, yeah. Benjamin Braddock whispered in his yeah. ear, what's the next thing? Plastics. Well, I think the next big thing is government. I think the last bastion wow. of stable, benefited jobs moving forward is going to be in government, state, but especially federal. And so whatever it is, and they, because they're the largest employer, I believe that whatever your skill set is, you'd be wise if you care at all about stability and benefits to consider government work. Right. right. Oh my God. Well, Marty, I, I, I can't, funny. yeah, I can't thank you enough. Um, we, Rudy, we were blessed to have the best. And well, uh, I like the fact he did something to demonstrate that took the whole moment away. Yeah. Uh, just by demonstrating something that he felt. Yeah. yeah. Rudy, I'm sure your other guests have that. said this to you, but no matter what I will ever do for the rest of my life, what you did to inspire millions is far greater. And we are all in your debt. Well, Rudy, I hope people listening who are trying to decide what to do as their next move, either for a job or a career, I hope they found that uh, beneficial. I know I thought it was, you know, he had some great insights. Well, he had something that was important, reality. Mm -hmm. There was no smoke or mirrors. Get off your butt, dude or lady. Let's go. Let's get it done. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting to me. Do whatever it takes for you to get to where you want to go. Take a lowest maintenance job or the lowest job there just to get into company where you want to work mm -hmm. and work your way up again. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's wrong with that? Because if you have the skill and talent, they're going to recognize it. Right. Right. Absolutely. That's what he's saying. 
Exactly. Yeah. Well, listen, we are so glad you were able to join us today. Um, and we hope you join us here every week. Uh, and we'd love to hear your story too. It's an easy thing to do. You can just go to, you can just go to your email and, and write uh, to Rudy directly at uh, Rudy at riseabovewithrudy.com. It's that simple. Tell us your story. We'd love to share it with you. And please, if you can hit that subscribe button, we'd like that too. Leave us a comment uh, one way or another. And, um, and don't forget to, uh, to share this with your friends too. So Rudy, until next time.